All right. Hello and welcome to episode 14 of the Admin Bar. I am your co-host Kyle Van Dusen from Ogle Web Design. And of course, as always with me is Matthew Siebert. How's it going today, Matt? It is going well. I'm excited. I um, I don't know too much about this topic as I am living alone. I am single and uh, completely unattached. So balancing my work life is fairly easy. Yeah, I told Matt we're going to have like a rash of divorces in the group after this is over. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's gonna go to their uh, get a bachelor pad after this is done with. Oh, imagine! <laughs> and of course, I think everybody here already knows Nathan Wrigley from PictureandWord.co, a small web development agency based in the north of England. <laughs> but if you don't know Nathan, uh, it, as you can tell, I've listened to his podcast like a a, a lot. So you're on a hundred and something episodes now of the podcast, and fifty something, forty something of the the news. Uh, and I've listened to all of them. So um, why don't you go ahead and give us a little introduction about yourself for those of you who aren't familiar with Nathan and the WP Builds podcast. First of all, you've listened to more of them by a factor of, well, 100% than I am. Do you ever listen back to your stuff? Uh, rarely. Yeah, occasionally. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I find it hard. Um, yeah, so I, I'm Nathan Wrigley. I'm in the UK. It's about seven in the seven in the evening. Um, and I run an agency called pictureandword.co.uk and I run a WordPress blog podcast, really, uh, called WP Builds, which you probably haven't heard of. But if you haven't, uh, stay away. It's a load of rubbish. <laughs> Nathan is super underrated funny. And I can't tell you how many times I've just been listening, like in silence with my headphones and just started laughing out loud at something he said on the podcast. And I'm not in, I'm not entirely sure. I think it's like part British humor that I'm like, maybe it's just new to my ear or something. But I'm not always sure if he's trying to be funny or trying to be serious, but I'm laughing either way. So uh, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully I'm laughing with you and not at you. <laughs> it's okay. Both are fine. Okay, awesome. I mean, one of those things just happened a minute ago. So we we planned this uh, this little show, and we're going to be talking about kind of work life balance and kind of how we all handle that. And I I thought of Nathan because you know he runs his agency, he runs the podcast. It seems like uh, you know he's always uh, got something going on and a busy guy, and that's kind of hard to do when you work from home and have children. And uh, I know what that life's all about. So I thought it would be a good chat with him. And the best example of how funny Nathan is is he uh, wrote me on Messenger about. 30 minutes before this started and told me that he was the day had gotten away from him and he was covered in paint. So the, yes. the time management didn't go so well today, which is an awesome way to start this off. <laughs> I decided at about, about nine o'clock this morning that I wasn't going to do any work in inverted commas, uh, which is one of the things I want to mention actually a little bit later. So I decided I wanted to paint. So I painted and I kept painting and I painted for about eight hours wow. and Part of the painting, this is painting walls. I'm not like on a canvas. Sure. And part of the process of me painting was to unplug everything because I was painting near electrical things. And so all the clocks came out. So I had, I had no idea what the time was. And then my wife came home and said, oh, are you supposed to be? Ah! <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, I was covered in paint about half an hour ago. And yeah, just crazy, crazy day. Kids have decided to be ill and things like that. They're, uh, behind that wall um, watching films because they know that I have to do this. Luckily, they're kind of coached in that a bit now because I have to speak to guests and things quite regularly. And it tends often, if they're in North America like you are, um, it's in the evening, it's in our evening. So they're kind of coached. We've got a drill. Dad's doing a podcast, right? Everybody right. down, run. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but I, I don't know where you want to take this. If you want to you know, like give us a topic or I'll just kick us off. It's up to you. Yeah, I mean, I do want to ask, like, so you work from home, you have yeah. uh, young children in the house. Yeah. Um, so you got to kind of balance uh, being a dad and working and uh, being a husband and all of that. So do you yes. find that more? I'm sure you've had a, a nine to five job at some point in your life, right? Do you find this more challenging than that? Or yeah, I think I think more enjoyable, but more challenging. The the diff the parts that I find difficult are literally, as you say, keeping keeping on top of things when I, I did have nine to fives. Uh, all sorts of different jobs I've done, but um, most of them involved getting paid for my, uh, you know, showing up and doing the day's work and receiving a, a, a check at the end of the month and what have you. And that was kind of nice because uh, I was told what to do. So I'd arrive and here's the list of things. And usually it was a routine, you know, here's the 
list of things that you do normally. And so I got on with them. And then when when I put the close the computer or whatever it was that I was doing at the end of the day, you'd walk home and forget about it, and have a beer or something. And whereas that that isn't my life now. My life is much more. Um, everything never gets finished uh, in a timely manner. You know, I'm kind of always juggling things. I often work sometimes into the evening. I'll get up sometimes in the middle of the night if things aren't panning out with my sleep and do a little bit of work then and what have you. I've tried, I've tried as a freelancer, I've tried having an office, I've had an office and then I've had a co-working space, but I never showed up. I, I kind of went for the first few days and got to know people and then kind of figured, ah, I much prefer it at home. And I really, really like being at home and working. Yeah, this I'm, is I'm um, on that one for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, this is just a room in my attic, basically. I converted my attic about a, a year ago. And it was at that point that I ditched the, the kind of co-working space. Um, and I, I really like it. I like it for all sorts of really banal reasons. Like there's a kitchen down there. Yeah. Um, and there's a sofa. And there's a telly and there's, you know, just like a nice bathroom. And, and and although I am quite sociable in that I can talk to people, I don't crave it. I'm quite happy to sit and I live in splendid isolation up here all day, every day, tapping away on my computer. Mm -hmm. Because I'm in, that, I'm in that industry where a lot of my friends, like friends, real actual friends, are on, are on the internet in different parts of the world. Yeah. Um, so I, I do like... Yeah, I do like being at home and being in this space. It suits me perfectly. And I, I, I don't know what it was. That there was nothing wrong with the office conditions. They were absolutely fine, but it just didn't suit me. And no doubt a lot of us will be exactly the same, whether it's forced upon you uh, from you know the financial point of view or you've made the decision that working at home is better for you. I, I'm totally all for it. it. Drawbacks, I suppose, is that there's a kitchen down there yeah. and there's a sofa <laughs> and there's a telly. Right. And, uh, yeah, and I'm- to be a, a certain type of person. I have to be quite um, regimented. Although one of my little points that I wanted to mention here was that I I actually think it's really important to embrace the moments when you're being rubbish like today. I just knew. I just, I don't know what it was. I knew today was going to be an unproductive day. So I did something else instead. And mm -hmm. like that was decorating today. But in, in the past, it's been like, I'm going to go to the beach. I am going to the beach and I am absolutely going to revel in it because why well, feel bad about it? I'm not going to spend ages trawling through Facebook. I'm not going to spend ages doing that. And don't get me wrong. I waste time as much as anybody else. Absolutely dreadful with overdoing it on Facebook and what have you. But um, I think it's important to acknowledge when you're being rubbish to get out and do something which makes you feel good and and like actually say to yourself, wow, I'm out of the office. I should be there. This is naughty. Uh, <laughs> well, it's, and, it's a great uh, cure or at least prevention from, uh, from burnout, which, you know, yeah. if you're solitary and you're at home and, you know, it's real easy to do if all you do is work. Yeah. You, know, you do need yep. those, those personal days. You know, a nine yep. to five gives you personal days for that specific yeah. reason. So you need to be able to give it to yourself as well. Yeah, because let's let's be honest, we've all done work on the on the sly when we shouldn't have been on a Sunday or a Saturday afternoon when there's when honestly there are things which are far more pressing, sure. uh, family matters and other things to attend to. But you know, even in the car, you can be fiddling with Facebook or posting an email or something. Um, and I think it's really important to kind of say to yourself, okay, I should be working. I'm not working. I'm loving it. I'm loving <laughs> a nice time doing something else. Z, I mean, you sound like one of the things that I really enjoy about this, and I, I get the sense that it's something you enjoy too, is, you know, I can, when, when I worked a nine to five job, I had to get in my car, drive there, and then I was stuck there until the day was over, then I could come home. And now, like, literally five minutes before we were doing this, I was in the living room, sitting on the couch, watching some TV for a few, got to go do this show in a few, you know, and I can kind of morph between those two things, you know, just by standing up, really. Yep. That's, that's yep. the difference. Yeah, I, 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 here we go, right, guys. Here's the question: How often do you work? Uh, let's not let's not use the word naked, mm. but let's use something akin to naked. Maybe a dressing gown or something <laughs> like that with the slippers on. How how often do you do that? Well, you don't know if I'm wearing pants right now. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> it's why we have the cameras this way and not this way, you know. Uh, there was a, I don't know if you saw, just going to a, a bit of an aside, about a year ago on the BBC, there was this uh, live interview, this guy in Asia somewhere, he was the correspondent in a particular country. Yeah. His wife, his, did you see that? His wife yes. came in a little toddler and he, he couldn't get up to sort of get her out because he had nothing up beneath beneath the waistline. I, did, I saw that, that recently, actually, yeah. That could happen I, here at any minute, like out of this door right here. That could happen. We are yeah. live. I'm waiting yeah, for it to true. happen. Yeah. But do you do you ever do that? Do you ever sort of get up and have a, a lazy day where you mooch around in the clothes that you you know that you're just sort of more comfortable with, familiar with dressing up, whatever? Oh, I, I wear a hoodie and yeah. gym shorts all the time now. That's Perfect. it. That's, that's what like, I wear. And when yeah. I have to like go meet a customer, I'm pissed because I got to put jeans on. Like that's yeah. the worst. I'm like, crap, I got to put jeans on today. I am. Um, um, they one of the closet otherwise. most important um, aspects of this to me. This is going to sound really ridiculous, but I, I really don't like getting dressed up. Yeah, I don't uh, either. See, I I've do. worn a suit one time um and a tie kind of one time and i i didn't enjoy it and i vowed no i'm not going to do that so that, yeah i'm with you kyle i like to uh i like to just mooch around it yeah hoodie and some jeans that's it's, i think that's a great part of it revel in it enjoy it yeah that's absolutely i'm actually our, our last guest roby just commented saying that it's uh it's 6 10 a.m there he's still wearing his pjs because uh, his co-working space isn't open yet so <laughs> I think writers. you could probably go to your co-working space in pajamas. That's all right. Yeah, yeah nobody's going to care. That I mean, you're sad. paying you're paying rent, you know, so <laughs> there, there might be a dress code. Yeah, I think one of the one of the other things that I was going to mention on all of this is um, the, the whole work life balance thing for me is I'm I've really made a bit of an effort more recently to to kind of like streamline the way I behave when I'm in the house because I am guilty of watching the telly and I am guilty of um, you know like taking too much time out and although I've just said revel in it you know there's a point where you've got to pick yourself up and get, get yourself back to your computer and I'm I am have been especially with having a podcast and a Facebook group and things like that I've been a real uh, diva at looking at Facebook and checking in on all of that sort of stuff far too much like it's it's pathetic how much you know, I, I look at that stuff and I actually um decided about I don't know three months ago I was going to make a conscious effort so I switched all the notifications off for everything I was in like seven and a half billion Facebook groups um and my feed yeah and and I just I went through and either left them all or switched them all off. I even turned off my um my notifications for email, which was a really difficult thing because I kind of I had in my head that that was really important to catch email because only important things come through email where social wasn't. Right. Yeah. But I, that was nonsense. Looking back, hardly anything of any importance comes through an email. So I I, I made a decision that I was going to do what a lot of people, sensible people decided years before I did was that I was going to check it twice a day, you know, maybe it's midday or uh, at five in the evening or something like that. And that's been great. I've really enjoyed that. And the phone has become a kind of an object for playing music now and taking actual phone calls when they come through, as opposed to an object which is in my hand, uh, just going like right hours of that. I started, when I started this business and started working from home, like, man, it's, I answered the phone on the first ring. I was answering customers the second yep. they sent me an email and it's taken me a long time to like relax on that. Like the phone was the first thing to go. So if my phone rings, I'm not going to answer it. Like there's, unless I know who it is and I want to talk to them, I'm just not answering it. And I think my outgoing message now just basically says like, you know, the best way to get me is through email. Here's my email address. Yeah. Uh, Cause I can't stop down every time, you know, I, I do have customers that <clears throat> if they need something tiny, they still want to call and talk about it on the phone. And I'm like, man, yeah. I just, I don't got time for that. You know, yeah. shoot me an yeah. email and I can get that taken care of. It's but. true. And it's almost like you're, uh, you're, you know, you're training your clients in a, in a way. Um, I had, when I first started, I had some clients that, you know, they, you give them an inch and they take a mile type of thing where um, I would answer them right away. Same as Kyle, you know, you're, you're, you're young and you're, you're like you're amped to to start working for yourself, so you know you, you you do that, and it's totally natural. 
but uh, I found that very quickly this uh, this particular client, you know, they were emailing me, uh, or texting me even, um, you know, nine o'clock at night. I would wake up to texts that they had sent at uh, at like one o'clock. Maybe they had woken up uh, and and thought of something, and they're like, "I'm just going to text Matt," and that's you know that's just it's it's a bit unprofessional, and it uh, it's a it's a real good way to uh, to burn out because you you're just not shutting off, and you need to give your time you know, yourself time to, to just relax. I think for me, it was, it was quite, it, it was quite a revelation just by making the decision to not have the notifications come through. And then realizing that was the way back in for me often, I, I, I would never open the, I use uh, G Suite. Mm -hmm. I would never open it. I would open it via notifications. I'd never actually click on the, the icon for the for the app. I would always go in because, uh, you know, you've got seven new emails, so i click on that and open right. it. Now that they've gone uh, and I've removed the icon from the home screen, I, d I, don't, I don't find myself going in it as much at all. And uh, that's a real change for me. Um, and that's been, yeah, r really, really useful for me to do. Uh, yeah. And I wonder too, like, I think you guys, Matt and Nathan, you can both kind of give me different perspectives on this. And I kind of have my own thoughts, but you know, um, Nathan, you have a, a family at home that also needs your attention, not just work and everybody in these groups wanting your attention, you know, and for me, uh, they'll usually knock me on the head if I'm in here too long or, you know, not doing, not taking care of those things. I'm too focused on this. You know, do you, do you kind of see that sort of thing happening with your family? Um, yeah, I, I, I had a strategy uh, a, a while ago. I've kind of stopped it now because I've got, got this room, but I had this strategy where the shoes that I was wearing was indicative of what I was doing. Uh, I, I got that from my dad because he worked at home and he was, he was a financial advisor uh, and he didn't um, always change, you know, because he was at home like this. He would wear his casual clothes, but his shoes, he would change. So he put on this smart pair of shoes, and if if the if the shoes were on, uh, he was working and he was not to be disturbed. And I kind of adopted that with a pair of Birkenstocks, which, uh, which I quite like, like little sandals. Right. And so I did that for a while. But now I've got this this room. If I'm in the room, that's kind of indicative that I'm working. So, but yeah, I, honestly, Kyle, I've screwed that up so many times. I've overdone it. I've worked too late. I've forgotten myself. I've forgotten that I'm a dad, um, you know, and went to bed tired and woke up miserable and all of those kind of things. And uh, my wife is amazing uh, at like sucking that stuff up. Um, but, you know, there comes a point where you, you kind of get sat down and told, I think you might be overdoing it. And so, yeah, I've definitely not got this right 100%. Not even now, but I'm better than I ever was. Uh, just going back to, to Matt's point, I um, the way that I stop the the customers, the clients kind of getting in my way is I, I, I do everything via... Um, so new customers, new clients, that's an email because or it's a visit to their um, premises or something but uh, existing ones I, I make it really clear right at the very very beginning of the process that I will not respond to their email um, they have to go through the, the, the basically a form so once once they've become my client they kind of drop into my um, CRM if you like and that that I enable them to access a form on there and everything has to go through there and that's work wonders um, and they don't abuse it and they get they get a one a month. They get one call a month, um, and in that call, they you know they prioritize everything. Here's the most important, second most important, and we get through in half an hour or an hour, whatever it is we need to get through. And anything that's not got through goes on to next month, hmm. um, and that's that's worked really well for me. But yeah. And that's so much more discipline than me. I'm just willy nilly when they write me, I get up and do it. So yeah, I, I think if, if you black them for it, I don't mean that rudely. Um, no. If if it, if you don't respond via email and stick to that, then they quickly, uh, you know, I suppose you could fake that a bit, couldn't you? You could have a fake auto response, you know, like a canned response or something saying, um, you know, being one of our customers, uh, it, it's important that you use our procedure or whatever otherwise you you won't get the answer in a timely way uh, so would you mind going as requested to this page and fill out this form and uh, yeah uh, and often in my case i'll end up on a skype call with them that's 
that's perfectly all right and we go through it that way because it's quicker than doing things via a form yeah for sure so matt on the on the other end of that question that i just asked nathan you know we kind of have people living in our house that need our attention too so how do you how do you like kind of know when it's time to shut it off or do you have anything like that um i well so when i started i worked a lot i worked uh fairly constantly i would i would start in the morning and i'd look up at the uh towards the uh, mm -hmm. the end of the day and it would be dark outside and i didn't get up i didn't move very much now i um i definitely make sure that you know throughout the day if i start feeling a little bit restless i go outside and i take a walk or i hop in my car if it's too cold and i drive uh drive around do a loop um just get up get active a little bit um as far as calling it quits i uh i don't respond or look at emails after five o'clock. Like I could get a, an email from a client at 5.03 and uh, it's gonna be answered the next day. I do work early. Um, I function way better during the uh, during the morning than I do at night. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a naturally early early riser. I get up anywhere between like, you know, five, you know, six is kind of late for me. Um, so I'll, uh, I'll sit down in the morning and I'll draft all of my emails, but I won't hit send until nine o'clock. Um, again, training my clients that those are my hours. Um, and in doing that for, for a little while, um, I just started to naturally say, okay, work's going to start at nine. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, and I'm done at five. So typically, typically that's, that's all I need to do. Yeah, it's nice, but you've got a handle on it. I, I think it's too easy just to let this stuff come in. As we said, the notifications are there. and um, It's interesting that you compose a draft as well and then literally don't send it. Do you, do you have an automation there where, you know, you delay it and it automatic, or do you go back in and then click send? No, I'll, of... um, I'll go back in. Uh, so I'll have like, you know, several emails ready to, ready to roll. Um, I found that, you know, sometimes you do get uh, an email you know, either yeah. after close or, or right before you open or something. And, uh, you know, just to, just to double check that, that I'm not re, you know, like answering something that, that has already been answered or, you know, whatever. Um, but I'll glance through them, make sure that everything's spelt correctly and that, uh, that I work, I use my words right. And, uh, I'll hit send. Mm. I've actually adopted that for not for every client, but there are certain clients that <clears throat> will kind of abuse my, uh, you have my cell phone number, uh, type business model I have. Uh, so they'll, they'll text me late or call me late or whatever. So I have adopted that with several customers where all, I almost can't help myself, but to respond right away because I just want to like, I'm very, there's all these things on my list and I need to check all these things off my list. But for some reason I can let it go if I like, type the reply and then just close it without sending it. Yeah. And then that way I know it's ready to go. And in the morning I can boom, I can shoot off, you know, 20 emails right away and uh, move on to the next thing. I don't think I give out my mobile number. Uh, I possibly do. I should check, but what if maybe it's in the footer of my emails or something, but I don't generally give it out. I've got a, um, you know, like a dedicated landline, we call it, you know, yeah. like a physically attached phone. Um, and that's good because it's in this room. Um, although literally about three days ago, it rang at three in the morning. Some client decided to phone me and everybody got woken up. It's never, <laughs> ever done that before. I got, I got one of those weird things too. Ah, it, yeah, it yeah. Just, yeah, look at that, it, look at that thing. Yeah, I know. You Can you imagine like, <laughs> hello, how are you doing? For the people yeah. that can't see on the podcast, it, yeah. it looks ridiculous to hold a real phone. Yeah, uh, no, I like it. I've, but um, I, just, I just have it forward directly to my cell phone. So I'll see it light up a half a second before my phone rings and then I answer my phone. So I've kind of worked that to where that has a different phone number than my cell phone. So I give customers that phone number. So I, if I'm sitting at my desk and can see it, I know that it's like a customer calling and not, you know, Matt or something. Um, the, the interesting thing I think about all the, all of that stuff is that, you know, a lot of money and research has been spent on working out, look, particularly Facebook, um, working out how to best get you back in. Um, and so I think things like that can be a real draw, you know, like the phone lights up. So you, the landline is forwarded to the mobile. So the mobile lights up and the mobile's with you in, in the supermarket or whatever. So it, it even if you didn't pick it up and respond, it's still, it's yeah. still got you. You've, you've made a mental note. You've possibly taken it out of your pocket and had a quick look. Uh, I'll get back to them later. I do like 
it being on my desk with no connection to um, to the you know anything that I carry about me because I can walk back into my office and if the little red light is on, oh, I've got a message and if not, then I haven't and it hasn't interrupted me. And I've, I've never, no client has ever ever get got grumpy with the fact that I haven't replied within you know 24 hours or whatever. They've always been. Oh, thanks for getting back. Yeah, I think it's all about the expectations you set, you know. Yeah. So if you start the relationship out with, you know, immediately responding to them, they're just going to think that's normal. And I don't think it's yeah. like their fault to think that uh, you're going to respond that way all the time. That's the precedent you set, right. you know. Mm-hmm. So I think being especially particular about that when you start out is important. I know um, I have trouble with like sometimes not knowing. Like if you if you just stop me and ask me, are you working right now or are you just at home right now? Like there's many times during the day where there's kind of like a blurred line between the two, you know. So in here when I'm sitting at my desk, I have a desktop and I'm kind of strapped to the desk to be working. So obviously if I'm sitting here, I'm working. But I have my laptop, which I keep in the living room most of the time. So I can sit on the recliner in the living room with the TV and the kids or whatever and still be working at the same time. Ah. I know Matt will, uh, he discussed this last week, you know, when, when it's time to go to like start work for the day, he'll like get up from there, get in his car, drive around for 10 minutes and then come back. And now he's at work. Um, and that's just kind of like his mental thing to get, get ready. I just kind of roll in here, but, uh, I'm sure that kind of like separates work and not work for you. So do you have, do you have any trouble with that, Nathan? Like knowing if you're working or not, does that make sense? Years ago I bought, a a laptop you know and I was addicted to it and it traveled wherever I went within the house and I really screwed that up because it it became like my phone you know like a lot of phones are it was just with me all the time and I would I would looking back it was a bit pathetic really and I feel a bit ashamed about it you know I would say to my wife things like I've just got to do this and and I would always start it with those imperative verb i must do uh, it's important that i um very very gotta do this and three minutes would go and then it'd be 20 minutes and half an hour and so on and so forth and i kind of realized i don't know several years ago no no this is insane why am i doing this so now i have a laptop the laptop is what i'm using at the moment um and it can leave this room but I've kind of, I've wrapped it up in so many wires and cables and the, it's really complicated. It takes me about three or four minutes to dis- dismantle it to move. That's enough of an impediment because I am genetically lazy. Sure. Uh, that's enough of an impediment for me not to remove it from this room. So this one, which I got uh, just at the beginning of January, it hasn't left this room once. Um, and I, I like it that way and I'm, I'm going to keep it that way because this space... I've demarked as as a workspace. So I, yeah, I, I was so dreadful at that, but I'm trying to be better. So when uh, when you were doing it that way, um, did you ever suffer from from burnout and just feeling like this is this is so much? It's it's just overwhelming my life. Um, I, I I don't I can't in all honesty put my hand on my heart and said I've I've ever been miserable. I'm not that kind of a person or burnout or any of that, but. Um, without a shadow of a doubt, I was overdoing it. I was allowing things that had no business being important to be important. Uh, so, you know, uh, just what we talked about, you know, a client would write me an email which had like, no business being at the front of my mind. But because they'd replied, I would ah, I'll just quickly just quickly knock out a reply that'll make them happy um so things like that or i would spot something on somebody's website and i'd oh, I that button look the colors are wrong um, i'll go and do that quickly um rather than thinking well i'll just put that in a list or make a mental note or something like that or scribble it on a bit of paper for goodness sake what's wrong with that um and uh, so really bad at that but no it, it didn't affect me because i honestly believed it was important mm-hmm. but it, it it took a realization i think really if i'm being honest it took other people to speak up and say well, just put the blooming thing away yeah, uh, you know we're here yeah yeah so yeah, yes and i'm i'm lucky too like my wife she doesn't do facebook 
Uh, she's not, she, she runs her own business as well. Uh, but she's not as married to it as I am, you know, uh, in, in a very positive and healthy way. So that's a nice counterbalance. Uh, she'll, she'll remind me pretty often. So that's I think it's important to be reminded in the same way that I would want my children, uh, to, 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 to behave in that way as well. You know, I'm going to, if you've got kids you'll know um they're they're being raised in a generation of 100 percent switched on they're always they're there it's there this is the modern metaphor you know you don't look up you look down um 100 of all day and i'm trying to be a good role model with that more now i'm trying not to have the phone out whilst we're watching the telly and i'm trying to persuade them to no put it away this space is, is for the next hour we're all away put them away I'm not 100% successful, <laughs> sure, right. but I'm trying. Man, I just, uh, just during this conversation, I thought uh, back to maybe the first, first like five years of, uh, of doing this, <clears throat> working for myself, um, I didn't take a vacation. I was afraid Ooh. to, because in my head, I thought if I stop, my business stops because it's just me. And that like you know the week that i'm going to be gone i'm not going to be able to answer emails i'm not going to be able to get work done on projects you know and I, that that means that my income is going to stop for that for that time period um and only up until recently have i been okay with putting everything away for a week or for a week and a half and going somewhere and just enjoying myself um i was dating somebody at the time that uh you know she would be like hey i'm going to a conference in orlando or i'm going to to this or that and i mean she had to pull me away from uh away from my business yeah. to actually go and have fun you know and that's that's definitely detrimental and um i, I think it, it probably didn't help the relationship either to be, uh, to be perfectly frank but um you know like I, I think that being able to to put stuff away for even a short time for for a full weekend just start doing that and then and it's it's so important it really is when you um when you've got kids you kind of you don't really have that choice i think it's removed in a way you know they they have school holidays and those kind of things you you become a bit more observant of the calendar the calendar becomes crucial um so you know the the six month calendar or the one year calendar you know oh we're all off in august right we're better organize something for then or we're going on holiday in a, in a i don't know in about six weeks or something and again it's been in the calendar for absolutely ages but i was a hundred percent, Matt, like you, um, before I had children and before I was, you know, married and so on, mm -hmm. exactly the same. I, I had that kind of craving to be there all the time and never wanting to, to put it down. Always the fear of where's the next bit coming from. So I, yeah, I get it. Yeah. yeah. I think both vacations I've took since I went out on my own, I had my laptop with me and made sure like there was going to be Wi-Fi and I could handle things. Now I didn't get on it much. I think, shoot we went to disneyland like a little over a year ago and i, I probably opened the laptop maybe twice while i was there but i made sure i had it you know so. yeah but i do have a way we can fix this imbalance we have uh me and nathan are both just going to send one of our children to live with matt for a while <laughs> that's it perfect uh, we'll trim know, that I'll, a little I'll, bit I'll, i'm in for the all three i'll i'll go for the uh, the full monty <laughs> yeah i i've already offered matt to take one of mine and i even told him he can pick which one you know he's met all yeah. three of them so he can just pick or but, matt can just come and live with me there you go there we go um and i'll, I'll feed him and treat him like one of my children one that of my sounds pretty children. good actually <laughs> yeah it seems like a, a too good to be true type of deal there <laughs> yeah no doubt can i just ask one last thing if that's all right yeah because just go for it sort of occurred to me is that um like organizing just so we this is just the, the minutiae of the day to day. I'm still grappling with this one in that I have no idea without my Google calendar uh, what I'm doing ever. And I, I'm i not exaggerating. If I don't have it in the calendar, I do not know it exists. Yeah. So, you know, things like, this is going to sound pathetic, but... You know, my wife will say to me at the beginning of the day, can you, would you just mind doing this, this and this? Um, like as an example, I don't know, it might be grab a pint of milk or something. I have to, I have to put it in the calendar. Yeah. Because <laughs> otherwise I won't get the milk. 
I'm just not going to remember it. Yeah. And so I'm kind of trying so desperately hard to get my um, to get my wife and therefore the sort of whole family in that trying to get them onto like an electronic system. Of like right. just, it's not it's not going to happen. But well, see, so, we, we just went through that. Uh, like my wife, she she sees clients at her office um, and we have the baby here. So one of us always has to be home. You know, so somebody's got to be here with the baby, uh, ideally. Um, so uh, <laughs> she's she's a paper and pen type person. Like she has a, a big calendar she buys every year and she writes everything in it. And I'm all about, I just want it online where I can check it anywhere yeah. I'm at and all that, you know. Uh, and it just became apparent really quick once I was full time and she was working uh, full time that there was no way we could coordinate our schedules unless we were all on one calendar. There's just no, I mean, so we do, we, if one of us has to go to the grocery store or go run an errand or something, it all goes in the calendar because otherwise we're going to double book and nobody's going to be here, you know? So who I'm, puts it in the calendar? We both do. So she has it on her <sighs> phone. I have it on my phone. It took me a while to convince her, but we, it just yeah. became out of necessity. Like no, you can I think just have I'm another not. baby and then there you go. You'll have to do it. I'm losing that battle, but we've got a nice compromise, and the compromise is that we have a we have a paper calendar, a weekly paper calendar, and it, you know it's just you tear off the week once you've finished it and chuck it in the bin, and um, uh, and everything goes on there, and then I stand in front of it and write it all in to the Google Calendar. That works. It's not ideal, but you it, got you got to get her works. on the the Google Calendar, yeah, and it's much better. But the other thing that we do is we have like a weekly like. I just make sure at some point, usually it's on a Sunday. I just say, what's happening next week? Mm -hmm. um, and then she can, she, mem memory, the sure. whole thing, the whole week. In fact, more or less the whole year yeah. is, is up there. Whereas for me, it's in my toenails, you know, I've completely forgotten it. Um, and, and so then I either write it on that little calendar or type it into my phone or whatever. Um, yeah. So I have, a, uh, I have a whiteboard that I have um, like notes to myself to, to typically just work stuff. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Every day um, I write a, uh, a list oh, of yeah. This, yeah. Is, this is the stuff that I do today. Like, and this is all client stuff. Um, That's what a Trello board's for, Matt. Yeah, for, like, I mean, I use Trello, but I crossing stuff off, like writing it down also helps me remember it more than typing it out. Sure. Um, you know, look, so so that helps a lot. And then for you know, getting the milk or groceries or or this that and the other thing, it's um, it's phone reminders like the like Google remind me at two o'clock to blank. You know, and that way, my phone just buzzes and says, "Hey, you got to do this." So I have somebody. <laughs> you know, it's not a spouse. <laughs> I'm so lonely. <laughs> it's not a spouse or a girlfriend or anybody, but it's it's somebody saying, "Hey, remember to do this." Yeah. When I was at um, university, this was in the days, look at me, I've got gray hair. Um, this was in the days before, like, generally people were using computers. They were there, but it wasn't mandatory that you type things out. I think probably if you go to university now, you'd have to type it all in. I'm sure that would be the case. Mm -hmm. I had to handwrite everything. And in that at that time, I could not make, a, 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 I, I just couldn't work out how people could look at a screen and write and understand what they'd written. I genuinely couldn't. And then that came over time. And now I've, I've lost it and I'm exactly the other way around. But your list, I think that would, I think I should at least try that for a bit because the whole kinesthetic thing, you know, you, you're scribbling it, you're mm -hmm. moving your hand, you're actually consciously, it's less throw, well, I say it's less throwaway. Of course, it's, it's entirely throwaway, but, um, you know, it's less it's tangible. Yeah, it's tangible and it's not just sort of out of sight, out of mind because it's always there. My screen, as soon as I do uh, command tab, my Trello or the equivalent is gone. And unless I look at it, you know, it's it's not there. But you I like that. I'm going to. I'm going to make a mental note to do a bit. Of There's it something down. so incredibly yeah. satisfying about crossing it off rather than ticking a box online in Trello yes. or this or that, like actually yes. like crossing it off. It feels good. You know, it feels like you've per You've got a little bit more uh, productive that way. Yeah. And with my Trello stuff, essentially, if stuff doesn't get finished, I just click the mouse and drag it to the next day kind of thing. And, mm -hmm. you know, whereas that piece of paper, that's yeah, a bit incriminating, isn't it? Look, 90% of this paper has not been crossed out. Bad. And then you got to rewrite all of it the next <laughs> day. 
I've, <laughs> yeah. I've done that. And actually, um, right over there, I have a, a folder. So I have all of the uh, the days uh, similar to to Trello, I guess. It's uh, it's past notes and it's yep. it's past lists, and I don't throw them away. I'm not a hoarder. I live in a very clean house, but sure. you know, it allows me. I date them like up at the top, and it allows me to go back and say, okay, on this day, this is exactly yeah. what I did. Um, and that's that's coming handy, you know, when when clients are like, hey, you know this was supposed to be done this day, whatever, I can go back and say, yeah, it was like this, this was crossed out on that day. Um, I noticed um, that all successful people have whiteboards. So I, uh, I got myself a whiteboard about, about six weeks ago. And so far, one, two, three, four, I've written four words on it. (laughs) Remember uh, to write on me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, um, two of the words are to do. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it's there. It's literally like here's the pen. Look, there's the pen. Uh, it's there. So, Matt, I'm going to try harder with that. I'm going to make an effort. If it doesn't go on paper, I'm going to write on that whiteboard. And I've gotten it. to the point now where I can't read my handwriting at all because I type. Ah, it. So yes. I'm just giving you typing. <laughs> I can read my typing. It's a little inconvenient, <laughs> but I can read it. But I do think the whole weekly calendar thing, getting back to the sort of the idea of like work life and all of that, I think that's quite a good thing. Just keeping keeping everybody in your in your family uh, on on track. My yeah. kids are too young; it doesn't matter. We organise them, sure. but I need to know what I'm organising with them because there's music lessons and there's drama and there's clubs and there's football and there's all that. Um, and without that, without that like communication, then things go pear shaped fairly quickly. So that's quite good. The other thing that I've started trying to do, and I don't know, I think this might have been somebody maybe in your group that got this whole thing, I can't remember, was kind of batching the week. I'm trying that at the minute. I'm kind of trying to do, because I do the podcast um, and that occupies quite a lot of my time, I'm trying to batch that as a, let's say, a Monday job. Um, and then maybe maybe it's a Tuesday job as well or, or a Wednesday morning. And I'm trying to work out what works best for me. Like every Wednesday will be a bit like this and every Thursday will be a bit like this. Um, and I haven't quite arrived at the, the perfect solution at the minute. But that, that seems to be a way that works because I can just look and think, okay, Monday. What am I doing on Monday? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I would like to get to that point too because now my days are – I've gotten to the point now where I uh, I will at least like – if, it, if something comes in today, even if it's small from a customer, I won't do it until the next day because mm-hmm. I used to be really bad about just jumping on stuff immediately. And then when you can't do it, people are like pissed because you've set bad expectations. Yeah, so I used to have to yell at you a lot for that. Yeah. So I have gotten better at that. I'm not going to do anything today that comes in today. Uh, so I know like once I cross off today's list, I'm done with my responsibilities for the day, you know, which is nice. Yeah. I do starting uh, a project before getting a down payment and finishing a project before getting a down payment. Kyle used to be notorious for that one. Yeah. What? Really? Oh, that's great. (laughs) You know, you roll the dice, see what happens. That's all right. I suppose if if you're in that, if you're in that phase of really being energized and really, you know, maybe there was something in it that you just wanted to learn anyway, then yeah, why not? Yeah, it, it doesn't hurt sometimes. I'm better about it now that I've gotten busy. Well, guys, we do got to we got to wrap this up. We've been uh, blabbering on for a while, but you, I know you you jokingly said you wouldn't be the right guest for this, Nathan, but I think you've been brilliant and perfect for this uh, because <laughs> we're all just figuring out what, you know, what works for us. And it's going to be different from all of us. Like you're, you're going to switch shoes. I'm never going to put shoes on. Matt's going to drive around his car. I'd rather not ever leave any time. So between the three of us, I think at least somebody might have some kind of good idea at of this so yeah i'm really curious to see like anybody that's watching too like down in the comments like write your write your daily like what what do you do like how do you wake up what do you like how do you go to work you know like write all that stuff down because if it's if it's different than what we do you know maybe our our three suggestions haven't helped today but uh you might help somebody else out so definitely Mm -hmm. uh definitely write that down absolutely well, Nathan, I want to give you the opportunity to promote anything and everything you got going on so people can go check it all out. So the floor is yours, sir. Okay, thank you. The first thing is I've never heard the words Nathan and perfect for this. Yeah. Uh, juxtaposed together. That was nice. Uh, that'll be. Uh, I'll, I'll clip that out so you can send it yeah. to me. <laughs> 
Okay, um, I do this to my guests on the WP Builds podcast, and I always think, oh, this is a great chance for them. Now that it's happening in reverse, I have no idea what to say. I have a podcast, wpbuilds.com. It comes out every Thursday. I do it with a chap called David Wormsley, who is literally the nicest man on earth. And we talk about WordPress things, and then I do a little news episode on a Monday morning as well. It's all the WordPress news, and it's about 15 minutes long. Uh, if you go to the WP Builds website, God, I'm literally regurgitating what I say in my own podcast. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Autopilot, do it. There's a whole load of uh, links at the top. Just click on those. There's some deals, money off WordPress stuff, and webinars that we do. We've got a few coming up. There we go. That'll do. Enough. And you, you, you guys did come up with something that I so wish I, I wish I had the guts to just steal it from you and tell you too bad I'm taking this, or I wish I would have thought of it before you. Is your, uh, your uh contribution episodes where you have people from your group coming on and showing off stuff so uh tell us a little bit about that so about i don't know about three months ago or something i just decided to i can't even remember how it probably wasn't my idea i probably stole it from the comment that you made um about coming on and doing tiny little bite-sized podcast episodes so maybe 10 15 minutes come on our podcast do a zoom call or a skype call with me and show us something that you're interested in or proud of. So that could be something that you've achieved in WordPress, or it could be like a little little thing that you figured out in Gmail that speeds up your productivity. But something that you think, wow, this is cool. People ought to know about it. Kyle did one. And, and that I, was I had an epic trip. fail on it. Yeah, oh, well, you know, that's life. And it wasn't an epic fail. It was just at the end. Yeah. And, and we've had about six of them, I think, five of them so far. They're at wpbuilds.com forward slash contribute. So if you want to join in, come on. I'll, you know, I don't bite. Um, and Unless you ask. Yeah, I might lick, um, but I won't bite. Yeah, that's and, just a British thing. Yeah, that, yeah. I wish I hadn't said that now. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, just come on and just chat with me about what you do. That'd be nice. For sure. And I will say, if anybody doesn't uh, listen to the news episode you do every mon- Monday morning, well, it comes in Monday morning, like early in the morning for me. That's yeah. always a stop down for me because I feel like I'm so on top of like what's going on and I never have to read a thing. So thank you. That's so good. Much. Thank I appreciate you. it. Yeah, yeah I, always, I always know what's going on. Yeah, thank you so much. Awesome. Well, I'll, I'll do a little bit of self-promoting too, and then we'll get out of here. So we do have uh, Pete Everett coming on uh, to talk about some serious SEO shit pretty soon. So he is actually going to go through uh, one of my client's sites and audit it and tell me everything that's wrong with it live inside the group. So I'm not preparing for this at all. I've sent him links and gave him some choices of different sites that he can uh, take a look at. I won't have any idea until we go live. Uh, So I'm a little bit nervous about this, but I've told him to rip me apart if it needs to be ripped apart. Uh, So he's going to be going through all that, showing how he uh, audits his site. Uh, So if you want to register for that, it's only available inside the group because I don't want my customers to see it so I can filter out, you know, the right people in the group. But if you go to theadminbar.com forward slash SEO, uh, you can register for that. And it's uh, February 8th, so a week from this coming Friday. So Matt, have I left anything out? No, I don't think so. I do want to mention uh, to people that are listening that uh, in our comments when we were talking about emails and ignoring them for whatever set period of time, uh, Roby did comment saying that uh, he uses Inbox Pulse, uh, which uh, quiets your inbox for a predetermined amount of time and just sends you uh, groupings of all the emails that you you get, uh, which I think that's awesome. And I'm definitely going to look into that. Yeah. And I think Gmail will let you like pause your inbox at least. Mm-hmm. Yes, news I, have a, I have a Chrome extension called Active Inbox and it enables you to do all sorts of things, but one of them is send later. Mm-hmm. So you can, uh, there's also a focus mode where it takes away all the stuff on the left-hand column so that you don't know what your inbox looks like. You just, mm-hmm. and you can, anyway, there you go. Another, another thing. Very cool. Well, everybody add your uh, add your life hacks to the to the comments in here. So, well, Nathan, it has been a pleasure. I appreciate you coming on. I'm like, I'm kind of a super fan of the WP Builds show and I started listening to you long before I ever had any like communication with you. So it is kind of 
kind of cool to like have you on here and uh, be a part of our show. I appreciate <laughs> oh, it. Thank you. I appreciate it so much. It's been really fun. Thank you so much. I really, really honestly enjoyed it very much. Thank you. Well, I'm, I'm glad we weren't too much of a drag. No, <laughs> no. All right, guys. Well, we will catch you on the next one. We'll uh, see you then. Bye. 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 <laughs> I wish I could do that. <laughs>